conceptual people talk about it all of the elements Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody's doing good. Look, I'm going to get right to the point. I need to have a very uh, serious uh, one-way conversation uh, with you. Some of you guys have followed me for as long as 10 or 11 years, uh, which spans the entire uh time I've had a presence on social media in one place or another and uh, some of you I have developed relationships with some of you I have worked with personally uh, others of you have come along at different points and junctures, junctures uh, doing this journey and you have been a part and seen what I do or you have had the opportunity to listen and learn and share and do so many other things uh, those of you who have been around for a while know that I have passions outside of teaching outside of writing outside of lecturing and outside of doing what I do for a living in business I have a passion and that passion is in the community that passion is in providing solutions and actually taking action. Uh, it would be hard for me to talk if there wasn't some action in direct correspondence to what I say. And to give you an example, I talk a lot about family. I talk a lot about our children. I talk a lot about protecting our women. I talk a lot about giving space to our men to be human uh, and to admit that they need help. I talk about mental health and I'm involved in the community in every last one of those ways. There's not a literally, literally, there's not a day that someone isn't referring someone to me for services. There's not a day that a mother, a black mother, doesn't come to me concerned about her black son. Uh, there's oftentimes black men are coming to me and asking for counsel. And those things that I can do on the spot that don't have a large demand for resources, they're just done, not even thought about. I talk to people every day in some pretty precarious situations and give them insight and, 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 and uh, share with them resources. Uh, I support other people who are doing it in, in the community, uh, in spirit, in, in co consultation, and in finance. Um, and I've been doing this for years. Uh, but there has been a great influx uh, for people in need, uh, people suffering from trauma, from childhood experiences, people who are struggling with not knowing what to do about wayward sons and so, so many other things. I've been telling you guys for a while that we are in the middle of a fundraiser. The Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative uh, and uh, a secondary, the Restoring Ghettos Forgotten Daughters, but Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Program is in the middle of a fundraiser and literally where we haven't raised any funds. Uh, let me tell you, what we need in specific and what I'm going to be seeking. We need to raise a minimum of $25,000 by the end of this month. And I'm going to get right to the point of what that $25,000 is for. We need computers. Uh, we need computers uh, to use as teaching tools. We need computers to use as management tools. We need computers uh, to be able to provide resources that these young uh, children um, and the children that will be using the computers will be between the ages of 9 and 18. Um, but the uh, Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative actually starts at the age of 4. We are focused on the proper socialization of black boys, but we need computers, we need books. We need books because books take the mind and guide the mind. We need to train them 
to be readers, uh, not just tell them to read. We need to train them to be readers. We need to engage them with specified material that we control so that we know what's feeding their mind. We need training material. Also, there's a cost to one-on-one -on -one interventions, which I do a lot of. Uh, and we need more resources, so we also need to be training providers. We need to train people who are willing to actually work with people. We need to do that. Uh, we need uh, resources for temporary uh, emergency housing, and this is for all kids, male and female and women. Uh, we also are uh, an organization that has been for years focused on uh, fighting mass incarceration uh, and recidivism and the way that we do that by one is dealing with the school to prison pipeline where our boys are alienated in the academic process as early as five years old um, and alienated and we talked about this if you want to see it we talked about it on the last uh, segment of the teachers with Dr. Uh, Cleet Ladd about how that's done and we want to interrupt that we want to get ahead of it we want to give our boys a fighting chance on the recidivism side it's about meeting them when they come out or starting to work with them while they're still in to prepare them to be productive and functional in society so that they don't trickle back into the lifestyles that landed them landed them lifestyles and the thinking more importantly that landed them into the system and another what another thing we are battling in our community and i have a mother that i'm bringing on this weekend who lost her son in ferguson of all places to violence and her 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 statement to me when i spoke with her this morning was we need to stop saying black lives matter number one is she's not a fan of the organization uh black lives matter with good reason but she needs. To, she said that we as a people need to stop saying black lives matter and start saying black lives matter when a police kills a black man because she said black boys are dying in the hood every day and nobody says a word and she's absolutely right and that's because we don't have a unified front to deal with this and so another major focus matter of fact black men lead started with me doing research on how to confront violence in the black community and discovering what's the leading causes and catalysts behind violence at a very microscopic level. What's driving it? Not, not you can say gang violence, but gang violence is literally a result or a symptom of something. We need to talk about what the cause is and it's the lack of proper racial socialization. And that's what uh, the rite of passage element in Black Men Lead is about. We need your support. We need to raise this money uh, by the end of the month. We need to have these resources in play. There are so many people who are in need of what we do, and there simply aren't the resources. There are so many people in need of, let me turn this around. I want you to be able to see my face. There are so many people who need what I literally have the expertise to give but I'm one person. I can't do it by myself. I literally had to sit down with my interventionists because I'm so stretched to the tilt of what I'm trying to do in, uh, on so many different uh, fronts. And literally, they were saying to me, you can't do it by yourself. Stop trying to do it by yourself. You're not gonna be able to do it by yourself. Uh, no matter how much you want to do it, no matter how much you're passionate about it, you're going to have to solicit help. You're going to have to solicit help in people who can do things. You're going to have to solicit help in people who can pay for things. You're going to have to solicit help in people who can sit down and help you strategize. You're going to have to do that. And so this is me sitting down and becoming even more invested in this. I've talked about it, and I tell you it needs to be done. You know, and my thing is, this isn't asking or forcing anybody to do anything. I'm talking to the people who are truly, genuinely, authentically concerned about the plight of our people and concerned about those in the community that don't have the access and opportunities that they have. Knowing that there are people out there that don't even know they have choices. There are literally people out there that think the life that they're living is the only life they'll ever have. 
and there's not a lot of people out there telling them different. And they need to know. And we need to be in the minds of these young boys as early as possible so that we can structure their thinking. They're thinking towards their future. They're thinking towards themselves and others who look like them. They're thinking towards the fairer sex and how they should be treated, how they should be handled. The, 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 the thinking towards what the responsibilities of manhood really is, what really are, and how, how do you function in them? What does being a provider mean? What does being a protector mean? What does being a physical, emotional, and uh, spiritual covering look like? What does being out in front in the community be, look like? All of these things are a part of the program. All of these things are necessary. We can talk until we're blowing the face about what we need in the community, but there has to be a structured, a structured, deliberate effort. When I talk about deliberate, I, 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 I like to define it because a lot of people hear it and keep moving. Deliberate means that there is a conscious and intentional focus in thought and action to achieve a goal. We've got to be deliberate in it. We got to literally be thinking the right thing and moving in the right way, simultaneously doing something to change it. We're not preparing our kids. We're not holistically educating our kids. And I've told you in, in both in the miseducation of black youth in America and in um, academic apartheid that the true definition of education is the holistic preparation and empowerment of youth to go out into a world as adults and not only compete but uh, win, compete in a world that's hostile towards them and win. That's what we're up against. And that's why we consistently find ourselves at the bottom rung of the socioeconomic ladder. That's why we consistently, consistently find ourselves in last place in every statistical category that matters as far as social standing, uh, political influence, political power, social uh, 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 sufficiency in so many other ways. It's because we're not preparing our youth. We're sitting up and hoping they can go out into a world half prepared, predominantly educated by a system that does not take their best interests into mind. And they go out and they fail miserably. Even when they think they're succeeding, they're failing. Why? Because they are not preparing the next generation and they are not in a situation where they are in control of their own destiny. They are still hoping and waiting and looking to appease someone else so that they can have a piece of their pie. And we are responsible for doing better. So once again, I'm asking you to look in the description box. There's going to be two links and then there will be the organization's cash app handle. I'm asking you, if we're going to do this, that needs to be on average. We are, what? 19 days away from the end of the month. So there needs to be a little over $1,200 or so a day minimum. You know, and I, there are people out here that actually will watch this video that could do this by themselves. And I, and, and I would love to see you stand up. I would love to see that one sponsor come forth and say, let's do the work. I would also like to see some people who have the ability to do some of the things I mentioned step up and be a part of the solution. Because, again, I'm literally engaging all of the needs of people who need interventions in whatever way it is. It's me. And literally, when you carry that, when you're dealing with some, when, when everything you're dealing with with, the, with with these interventions has something to do with trauma, it takes a toll on you because I'm an empath. I'm a person that actually cares. That's what makes me as good as I am in dealing with people. I'm not just out there running them through steps. I, I, I can feel what they're going through. And I feel it in a way that the average person doesn't because I'm not just an emotional empath. I'm a spiritual empath. I'm literally connected when I deal with people. That's why so many of my videos are so passionate because I can connect, because I'm there. And so I am right now challenging you to not only watch this video, to not only give, but to share this video with at least four other people that you believe think like you. And if you don't have four other people that think like you, you need to get with me anyway. Because that is a part of our problem. We are surrounded by a circle that doesn't see us in the future that we need to be in. 
we are living around people who are happy where they're at. And that has to change. Uh, so after you watch this video, share it with four people who think like you and ask them to match your gift. Then press the like button, press the share button, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because we are really going to start bringing you a bunch of stuff like the next few weeks. We're going to deal with uh, this uh, beautiful grandmother. Um, weekend it's been a busy day for me already so far but we're still moving forward look uh this is going to be uh, a power-packed weekend for me one way or another but i definitely need to sit in front of you just for a brief moment uh to amplify uh the need and the crisis uh you have heard me consistently at the beginning of every video talk about the need for support to ask you to support the fundraiser uh, it is nothing new that the support for the work that we do in the community, not just at the Odyssey Project, not just with Black Men Lead and all the other programs we have, but in so many grassroots areas, you see it. You see the nonprofit industrial complex, the, uh, the hijacking of real true grassroots movements by organizations like Black Lives Matter that... Uh, People like Darren Seals, Neota Yor, or myself tried to warn you about uh, early in the game uh, that they were hijacking the movement, that they were misdirecting and redirecting funds that were meant to support a movement where we were actually seeing something very unique and powerful happen. Well, it's the same. We have a tendency to get behind things because they have a big name. We have a tendency to get behind things because uh, of name recognition. I understand branding and all that. But the thing is, the things in the programs that are actually working, the things that are actually changing lives are very rarely going to be supported by mainstream because mainstream does not benefit from the empowerment of our people. Mainstream has, from day one, used our people to elevate themselves from slavery to reconstruction to uh, convict leasing, Jim Crow, redlining, benign neglect, urban renewal, uh, mass incarceration, miseducation, gentrification, and I go on. It's been a consistent use and misuse and mishandling of an oppressed people that everybody uses. Think about it. The the blueprint for migrants who come to this country is to put up a shop in a black community because they'll spend money and cipher out money of their community the moment it comes in, where everybody else is bouncing their money a minimum of three times up to 17 times before they that money leaves their community. Our money leaves our community within six hours of us having it because everything in our community isn't owned by us. Everything in our community isn't ran by us and the things that are ran by us don't get the support that it should. Uh, we have programs that work. One of the biggest issues we consistently talk about are the violence in the black community, uh, the mental instability or emotional instability of black males, but we don't talk about where it comes from. We don't talk about how to change it. Now, I have for years talked about it. I've talked about understanding the origin of African-American adolescent and young adult male violence, understanding the importance of racial socialization, understanding the importance of environmental influence, understanding that you've got to create a situation to grow and develop strong boys so that we aren't constantly trying to heal broken men. I've done this consistently over and over again. I've written about it in books. I've lectured about it to I'm blue in the face. I've probably got at least 400 videos up talking about that specifically. And yet we get to the point to where we still are not supporting programs that will empower us. We talk about black empowerment uh, as if it's an automatic, like if we just keep living, we're going to get what we deserve. No, 
if we don't start working, we're going to get what we produce. And what we're producing right now is very little because we are constantly buying into this idea of individualism, chasing the American dream, being very isolated and not being able to connect and relate to the people who are a part of our enclave or part of our community. Everybody else has community, no matter how they deal with each other, no matter they get a no matter how they get along, there's community. There's community in the Hispanic community. There's community in the Arab community. There's community everywhere except with us. With us, it's individualism. With us, it's trying to aspire and get somewhere else where everybody else is at to show we've made it. And in the process, nothing is happening for us on a collective level. So we get frustrated in our uh, political arena. We get frustrated when we can't get the right... Uh, funding for our business. We get frustrated when we can't get uh, proper uh, schooling and education for our children, but we are not being invested in creating the proper environment. Once again, this weekend, we are pushing to raise $10,000 for black men lead specifically and to raise a total of $25,000 for all the programs that we are spearheading and have been spearheading for years. This isn't new for me. This is something that's been going on, and anybody that's followed can go back and look back. This is my second go-round on, on, on YouTube. They they pulled the other one uh, some years ago, and you know we never got back to full speed on that as for subscribership, but hey, it is what it is. Um, I'm never going to be the sensational person. I'm never going to be the person running around gossiping and talking about everybody else and tearing everybody else down. So I'm never going to have a whole bunch of people because we like that. We like conflict. We like being at odds with one another. We like disrespect. We like, I'm not about that. I'm about building. I'm about finding common ground. I'm about finding commonality. I don't expect anybody to agree with everything I believe and I'm not going to agree with everything anybody else believe. Uh, but we've got to find a common ground. We've got to find things. And I think one thing we should have common ground on is that if we don't change the trajectory of the predominant uh, population of black males, we're going to have a problem. There's already 1 million black men, uh, 1.5 million black men missing. We know that 1.1 of those are in prison. Out of the 23, I mean, the 2.3 million people in prison in uh, the U.S., 1.1 of those are black men. While we make up a very small portion of the population, we make up a very large percentage of the prison population. It's not an accident. One way that we mitigate that is by properly racially socializing young black males. We know that, number one, they're less likely to drop out of school. And we know that if a child drops out of school, out of high school, they are five times more likely to become incarcerated. So when we reduce the dropout rate, we simultaneously reduce, reduce the incarceration rate. Uh, we, we are reducing violence. Uh, racial socialization is the most powerful influencer right now on the proclivity of violence in, in, in any situation and definitely within impoverished and black communities. We have to have a rite of passage. Why? Why does it work? Because it gives the, the child an identity. It gives them a sense of purpose. It gives them something they don't have now, a place. It gives them a reason for being. It gives them value. The moment that they see value in themselves, they see value in their lives, they automatically see it in the lives of their brother. But if they can't see value in themselves, it's going to be hard to value anyone who looks like them. If they see everything else as having more value than them, they're going to have a problem being able to protect things that look like them, to be able to embrace things that look like them. And we're seeing it also on, 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 on the female side, and we have programs for that as well. Look, we are going to need support. Uh, yes, it's great to like, it's great to share, it's great to subscribe, but at the end of the day, None of that stuff supports and gives the resources necessary to make this uh, program much bigger than it is now and to reach out and touch the lives of people on a national scale. Are we doing great work? Absolutely. We've proven over and over again it works. That's why we have the data. The data already shows it works. We need to be able to reach 
more of them. We need to be able to be consistent in our message. We also need to be able to universal, universally define black manhood so that everybody knows what we're supposed to be looking for in our men, what we're supposed to be expecting from our men, what we're supposed to be doing as men. It needs to be a universal definition of what manhood is outside of what these social constructs are presenting to us and asking us to pull and hold on so much more to manhood than getting the bag. Ain't nothing wrong with the bag, but if you don't have character with it, if you don't have a, a desire to protect, if you don't have a desire to provide, if you don't have a desire to be a priest, if you don't have a desire to speak into the lives of those that you are covering and, and, and speak life into, their, into them, speak direction and passion into them, speak purpose into them, if you don't have all of that on top of the bag, then we're lost. And my goal is to get as many young black boys as possible to buy into these principles of manhood. Number one principle, the one thing we enforce more than anything else is that black man never brings harm to a black woman. And that is so important uh, when we look at the fact that the second leading cause of death for black females age 15 to 44 is intimate partner homicide. There's a problem there. And we need to deal with the violence on both sides. I understand that. But we need to deal with this natural, instinctive violence and understanding where it comes from is the beginning. I've given, I've done all of that work. I've done all of that work. I've done all that research. I've chronicled it. I've written about it. I've recorded it. I've published it. We know it's out there. We know it works. Now we need to implement it. It's that serious. It's that simple. And so here we are. And this is what we're pushing this weekend. So I'm expecting and I'm asking and I'm challenging everybody who watches this to give. The link is going to be in the description box of the video you see. Give, share the link and challenge three other people to give as well. For everybody who donates at least $100, I'm going to send you my book, Born in Captivity. Uh, which is going to outline a lot of the stuff I'm talking about here and so much more. You'll see that there is so much that we can be doing to change our situation that we're not doing. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here and you'll be hearing from me the rest of the weekend. Uh, so on that note, thank you guys for sharing with me. Uh, you have an unbelievable day.